Hello, and thank you so much for watching my video on the incredible credible interval. Credible intervals are the Bayesian analog to confidence intervals, which you will remember discussing in statistics. They have some unique advantages over confidence intervals, especially when it comes to interpretability. I hope this talk will persuade you to learn more about Bayesian inference in the future and consider using Bayesian inference and credible intervals when you are next presented with a set or sets of sample data. First, we will discuss a brief review of confidence intervals, then move on to Bayesian inference and credible intervals, and end with an example and comparison of the interpretation of credible intervals and confidence intervals. Confidence intervals are the frequentist approach to attempting to provide a deeper understanding about the unknown parameter we are estimating. A confidence interval is a range of values that either contains or does not contain an unknown parameter some predetermined percentage of the time commonly 95%. If the experiment were conducted 100 times, we would expect the true unknown parameter to lie within each confidence interval 95 times. In the case of confidence intervals, the interval is stochastic and the true value of the unknown parameter is fixed. Some drawbacks of this approach are that 5% or the opposite of 95% or 90% of the time, the confidence interval can be slightly wrong or completely wrong. There is nothing governing how close or far away from the true parameter the bounds of the confidence interval are when the confidence interval is incorrect. Interpretation can, be difficult to, can also be difficult to understand and is often done incorrectly because of the way the confidence interval is constructed. Bayes theorem, Bayes theorem and credible intervals offer us an alternative. Bayes theorem, as we all remember, is this equation. Um, and Bayes inference, Bayesian inference in general, offers us two very important uh, things. First, it allows us to incorporate prior knowledge and use prior beliefs about probability distributions in inference. It also has no qualms about assigning probabilities to the unknown parameter. This allows the interpretation of credible intervals to be much clearer. A credible interval is a range of values that represents a given level of plausibility based on the posterior distribution. Here is a visualization of the difference between credible intervals and confidence intervals. We will illuminate this visualization with an example. Take, for example, that we have a random sample of data from the US population asking how long people spend waiting in line at the grocery store over the past week. For the confidence interval, we construct a 90% confidence interval with the sample data that gives us a range between, let's say, 8.2 and 12 minutes. We do not know that the true mean wait time for the entire population lies in that interval, only that on average 90% of confidence intervals we construct with different samples sample collected in the same way will contain the true mean. Isn't that a bit of a headache? The credible interval, however, is based on the posterior distribution function. In this case, the PDF of the data. We then select the smallest range, let's say 9 to 12.5 in this case, that contains 90% of the probability. In this case, we can say that there's a 90% probability that the true mean is contained within the interval 9 to 12.5. Here you can see the difference starkly. The interpretation of the credible interval is much simpler. That's what I want you to take from this talk. Credible intervals have distinct advantages over confidence intervals, and therefore we shouldn't just go always with, uh, with frequentist in inference ahead of Bayesian inference. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great afternoon.